Hi, I'm Bry Cox, brycoxworkshops.com. I want to show you how to, with these new actions, uh, really make some really cool looks quickly and easily. So we can start with an image like this, and every action is stackable, which means I can run one action, and it maybe gives me one effect. Maybe run another action, maybe even blend the two together, maybe even add another one on top of it, and maybe even add another one on top of it, and it keeps all of my layers intact. So the first thing we need to do though is load them. So let's just jump out and you need to go up to Windows, Actions, or for me, I'm just gonna hit this little play button. You'll notice I've moved my tools over here. I actually have a video uh, showing how I've uh, customized my menu and moved my tools around. But if you don't know how to get here, obviously you can just go Window, uh, Actions. And the first thing you wanna do is get out of button mode, but just so you notice, these are all the actions you just got. Here, all of these in yellow, these in orange, and these in yellow. It's about 50 something, I think 50-ish, 54 I think, uh, total actions, and they're a button. But for right now, let's just load those actions. So let's jump out of button mode, and what we're gonna do first is put those actions in the right folder. So let's jump into Finder. Of course, we have Finder up here in the left corner. And you notice here we can just go to Applications, and then we go into our Adobe Photoshop right now. The current version is the Photoshop CC 2017. And I'm gonna to go to the Presets folder and to the Actions folder. And this is where you're gonna drag and drop those actions that you downloaded uh, from my website. So again, we can look here uh, from your hard drive applications to Photoshop presets actions. And if you don't know how to get to act, uh, applications, of course, you can just click here. You can also go go applications. And then once they're loaded there, then let's go back to Photoshop. We can go to here and go load actions. We would then point to that particular set of actions. And then what happens is, is it'll pop them in as folders, you'll notice I've got quite a few set of uh, actions, and here's those right there, and I've moved them to the very top. Uh, and then once I do that, change it to button mode. At that point, they are loaded, and they will continue to stay loaded uh, every time you close and restart Photoshop. So now let's just kind of, well, I'll leave these layers, but let's just kind of show you how some of these work. So for instance, every action, even though they are each very complex and have a number of steps. It will only add one step, or one layer rather, to your overall uh, photograph. And that's pretty cool because you might have a few layers. You might have a layer where you've already retouched your skin. Uh, you might have a layer where you've done maybe some liquify or some contrast and various things. And now what we want to do, and I'm going to use some film actions on these because this is a really kind of a mid-century cool hotel where I shot a destination wedding down in uh, Arizona in Scottsdale, and I wanna make it look, well, like that, or something else. So right off the top, I have this film emotion dull, and if I click it, notice how it kind of brings those blacks down a little bit, so I'm being so snappy, down to more of like a film look. And then I've got more of a vibrant look of the same thing, and this yummy pop, what that does is gives the image, well, just a little bit more of a yummy pop, and you can play with these, and, and what's neat is you notice all of my action, or all of my layers stay intact, and it simply adds one more layer. Let's try this film cool exclusion number one. That's what that looks like, it adds it on top, and if we want to adjust any of these layers, here's the cool thing, we can do really four things. The first thing we can do is grab the opacity and fade it back and go back from the original, anywhere in between. Uh, another shortcut for opacity is just to hit V for move and then a number. So if I want 50%, I'd hit five. Or if I want 70%, I'd hit seven. And maybe I want to try 30%, I'm gonna hit three. I actually kind of like more of this look. So let's go eight for 80%. So that's the first thing is I can change the opacity. The second thing I can do is add a mask. And by adding a mask, right, we hit our little mask button down there, we get a mask. I always like to hit D for default out of, out of just pure habit, so I get pure white, pure black. 
In this case, I'm going to hit X to put black as my foreground, and then B for brush. And by the way, I've got all these shortcuts and more and lots of other things in my full uh, Photoshop uh, course, if these are at all confusing. But look how cool I can actually paint with my brush. And let's hit zero for 100%. I can paint away some areas, and I can hit X and paint back some areas. So one, I can change opacity. Two, I can mask some areas. Three, I can just completely delete it if I don't like the effect. And guess what? All of my original layers are still intact. And the last thing I can do is I can blend one with another. So let's try a couple. I'm going to delete some of these. And let's jump down to like these 1964s. That's what I've done here. I did 1964 blue. So let's just click that. And that's that look. I'm going to turn it off for one second. So I go back to my original. Now I'm going to go to 1964 pink. And what I had done earlier is blended those two. I really like that look. I think that one's pretty cool. And let's maybe do one, something a little different. Let's try the 1964 gold. Ooh, I like that. So let's mix that and the pink together. So what I like is I kind of like this look on their faces, but that look on the sky. So I simply add a mask, D for default, X, and I'm going to then hit G for gradient and hold the shift. And I'm simply going to draw a line and blend those two together and maybe hit B and just kind of, maybe at 30%, I'm going to hit three, just kind of blend that in just a tad more like that. And I really like that look. And what I might do is actually even bring some of that gold back up by simply painting. I'm going to click on this mask and just at maybe a 30%. Whoops, the other direction. There we go. Paint with white. Bring some of that gold kind of back in there. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I kind of liked it more. So I'm going to go X for black and I'm going to just kind of paint that in just a tad more. And then one thing else I want to do is I want to make this have just a little bit more of that dull film uh, black look. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to, now one thing you don't want to do is be on a mask when you run one of my actions. If you do, you may get an error, not every time, but if you get an error, you can just go down to reset actions and try it again. So let's just click off of that mask and let's go down to uh, film emotion dull. I think that looks pretty cool. And a couple other things we can do just to show you. Um, all of these are kind of effects and colors. We move down in here, all of these orange ones here are black and white effects. For instance, this uh, outdoor sepia kind of gives it a nice, kind of a little bit of a, kind of like that 1950s catalog black and white, where maybe this next one here is a little hotter black and white. A uh, couple more black and whites. And then these right here are some just kind of cool effects for things like, maybe I want to pop the shadows a little bit more. Lighten shadows, click it. Again, everything just adds one layer on top. And I go, I like what it did to the suit, but not everything else. So again, what I can do is mask it. I'm just going to fill that with white. And then with maybe a 20% brush, just kind of paint in some of those shadows a little bit brighter. So you can see the difference with just the shadows. Uh, I'm going to delete that. And then a couple of things I can go vignette. I just simply click vignette and watch this. Bam, vignettes the whole thing. And I can again soften that by just hitting V, maybe five for 50%. And then the last thing I might wanna do is add some film grain sometimes. And I'm gonna come in, cause look how beautiful and sharp. That's because I'm using <laughs> a pretty fancy camera, right? So if I wanna add a little bit of film grain, I can simply click fine or big. Let's go fine. And it's gonna add some grain. Again, it's always a little bit much. Grab the opacity, bring it down till I like it, I'm gonna bring it up to maybe about 50%. Let's just hit five for 50%. And there you go. That's how you use those actions. Now, let's jump over this other image here. This is another image from the same wedding. And I wanna use this action here, California sunset, to kind of bring the sunset in just a little bit more. I'm using a flash on them. 
in order to, one, make sure they don't have dull skin. And I've balanced this light really well with the background so we can see the background. Uh, if you have any questions on how to do that, I do have, cover all those kind of things, how to balance various exposures. It's all covered in my Lighting Like a Master course. But okay, so let's just run this one action. Click right here, California Sunset. Notice it kept my original layer and added this. I really like that. I want a little bit less effect on them. So again, add a mask, maybe at 30%, or actually let's just go 100%, zero for 100%, just so we can see, right, that difference. And maybe I just want to uh, kind of just take this off, this whole area. That's looking pretty good. And maybe I want 20% back. So one way I can do it is run that action again at 20% because this will still look the same. It'll just add it to the bottom. But again, I don't want to be on the layer. That's just one little trick here. I'm going to step off that layer, run California Sunset, V for move, 2 for 20%. So now I've got this one adding it to the background and this one just adding it just overall. And there you go. Just kind of a nice sunset enhancement. Pretty dang cool, all in one click. So if you have any questions with these, uh, drop me a line. Uh, let me know what you think of these as well. Uh, pass them on to your friends. I mean, not actually. <laughs> Don't send them copies of your actions, but hopefully you like these enough that you can recommend them to your friends so that they can come and purchase them. I mean, obviously I keep them at a very low cost so that it's not a strain on your business to get them and hopefully it becomes a great investment for your business where you can really work quick, be very productive and be able to create some really neat looks. And the other nice thing is with about 54 of these, all stackable, run them in any order you'd like and changing the opacity between them, you literally have hundreds if not thousands of various combinations where you can come up with your own recipes with these. All right, again, I'm Bry Cox, brycoxworkshops.com and these are my funky film emulsion actions.